Hello, I'm David Bianco. Welcome back if you're returning, and if it's your first time, thank you so much for joining me. If you press the subscribe button down there and ring the bell, you'll be notified of future videos. And it's a good thing because this is a series that I'm presenting on acoustic sounds and analog productions out of Salina, Kansas, where Chad Kassam is the CEO there. And I interviewed him for a wide ranging set of topics, and we're going to see a few of those next here on The Sound of Safe and Sound Texas. Due to some technical microphone issues during the interview, the audio is subpar. My apologies in advance for this weakness in the recording process. So on August 30th, I trucked on up to Salina, Kansas and visited with Chad Kassam, who is the owner operator CEO of Acoustic Sounds and Analog Productions and also the QRP plant that they have there that presses records. And uh, so I had some questions uh, ready to ask him based on some of the inputs I had from uh, listeners and subscribers. And I also had some myself that I wanted to ask. So uh, the first one I got into was asking if Analog Productions had any plans to document the provenance of their titles like MoFi is currently doing in response to their introduction of DSD now that it has come out in the mastering chain to see whether or not analog production was going to be making any changes or have them explain how they've done that in the past. And here was Chad's response. You know, we're going to uh, put a, um, you know, a sparse code as they're calling it. You know, we, okay. we have no problem. We've been putting it basically on our stickers, right? A hundred percent analog master from the hundred percent analog tape. And we, we have a sticker, it describes everything. Right. But uh, I guess now that everybody's so paranoid because of obvious reasons, yeah. uh, we're going to even put it on the jacket. You know, we're going to start trying to take more pictures of the master tapes. We've always done a lot of taking pictures and we've always yeah. done a lot of showing. Right. And you can ask any mastering engineer that works with me, whether it's Bernie Grunman, Ryan Smith, or Kevin Gray, how we do things. We've always been upfront and transparent and very proud of what we do and how we do it. Uh, again, people are wanting a little bit more. Yeah. No problem. Okay. We'll show. We're, the name of my label is Analog Productions. Uh, I believe that analog, the original, whether it's digital or analog, all, original is the original, right? Right. You can't get better than the original. Right. So, you know, taking a step from original to digital is already a step down. Right. You know, my opinion, like two steps down yeah. because you went from analog to digital. Right. Uh, you could have went analog to analog. Yeah. A copy's a copy. Uh, you know, we've done some digital recordings like the Cowboy Junkies. That's a digital recording. We've done uh, the Niels Lofgren. That was a digital recording. We've done Taj Mahal. That was a digital recording. We stated on our website. We always have. We always will. Yeah. Think that things aren't changing. We're just we're gonna make it idiot proof. You know, like that they want it on the jacket. We're gonna start putting it on the jacket. Uh, okay, fine. We've always put the stickers. Now there was some Beach Boys we did, which they were transferred from the, they were mixed from the original analog tapes to, to high res digital or digital. And that's the mix. If I wanted to spend about 30, 40 grand and beg them and take a month, we yeah. might've been able to do that, but it was already done. This is what it's like, do you want to hear the stereo? We made a decision. They were mixed from analog to digital, and we put them out, the Mark Lynette rem uh, remixes right. that were approved. Right. We were upfront about it. Right. You know, uh, the monos, there was about five of them. The monos were original analog. Right. And so, and they had some stereos that were original analog, but about five of them, including Pet Sounds, was mass, uh, mixed to digital. We're right. upfront about it. Yep. Upfront about everything. If 
they sound great. If you want them, fine. If you don't want them, I don't, you know, I don't care yep. either. <laughs> so, you know, the name of my label is Analog Production. So we really, really try very hard to use only the analog master tapes. And we know how important the analog master tape is. To me, the original master is the original master. There's not two original masters. There's one original master. You know, there's a reason why the Mona Lisa is safely guarded <laughs> in a museum. Yeah. There's many people that have a copy of the Mona Lisa. There's only one original. Right. There's a reason that that original is priceless. And there's a reason that the tape copies, you know, is, is, is not worth as much. Mm -hmm. So we know this. We use the original analog master, original master recordings, original master tape. That means to me, the original master recording means the original master tape. That's mm -hmm. how I read it. And to me, there's only one original master. And that's what we shoot for, and that's what we use almost always. When the tape is no longer there, then the best tape copy is now the original in my mind. Mm -hmm. We do whatever we can to find that original master. If we're pretty certain that it's not in existence, then we make a decision at that point. Gotcha. Gotcha. If it's an original digital recording and it's a really great sounding record, we'll put that out and make mention. Uh, we've also have stickers that we make, you know, that explains it all. And we also put it on the product page. Now, I know a lot of people, because of all of this funny business that's been going around, and that's a nice way of putting it, funny business. Yeah. People are emailing me all the time, like, and I can't keep answering people one by one personally, one individual that I've never heard of before. I know they're a customer and they're a person and they deserve to be recognized. And if I can answer that question, I will. But I'm getting inundated right now with calls. Was this record you made in 1962? You know, did you use the analog tape? I mean, sometimes it takes me a while to think back, but the answer is usually yes. But, you know, they, and I'm so glad I've got so many great customers all over the world that know who I am and they know what I'm about and they trust me and they know that I did the best I could. Uh, and so those people aren't emailing me. It's a lot of emails from people I don't know who they are. And I want to answer them truthfully it's just that i it's it's getting overwhelming i got work to do during the day check the website i say check the product page that's the yeah message. check the yeah. product page sure then if you have a if, question yeah that's different but make yeah sure. i mean check the product page yeah. call customer service <laughs> if you need to yeah i mean check the product page yeah check the sticker you know um Check the product page. Know that, first of all, we're not going to do it at all unless we really believe this is, we're trying to make the ultimate sounding record. Yeah. That's why, to me, making the ultimate sounding record is using the original analog tape. Sure. That's what you're shooting for. We start with that. We can't give Bernie a DSD copy and say we want you to beat the original. That's like tying his arm behind his back in an ass kicking contest. Exactly. <laughs> well, it'd be maybe like tying his leg around his back. But well, if, you know, you get the get picture. It, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We want Bernie or Ryan or Kevin to have the absolute best 
source to start with. We can't ask him to beat the original with a tape copy. And and so that's who we are. That's what we do. That's the name of my record label. And uh, and so a lot of people too, they even though it says mastered from the original analog tape on our stickers and stuff, people are like, well, there's people that still use that and go source from the original analog tape. Well, shoot, an MP3 could be source from original analog tape. Originally, mm-hmm. I mean, everything came from the original master at one time. Mm-hmm. Adam and Eve. <laughs> We're right back to the beginning of time. <laughs> but, well, it, it had to have yeah, an origin. Right. But but we didn't play with words. We original master means that to me. But since people want they want to see, I think, cut directly from. Exactly. And that's a different proposition. <laughs> right, but that's what we're doing. That's the goal. But that's what we do. But, you know, we didn't know others would play with words so much. You know, original master recording, to me, means original master tape. So I don't know if we need to put the day's newspaper by the tape and cut my finger and put, you know, we're going to do whatever it takes to make people feel confident. Yeah. Yeah. But our customers, most of our great customers, they know me. They know, they know who I am. They know what I stand for. It's it's kind of like a lot of the people that I don't know that are um, problematic, that are very paranoid about everything, and I and I can understand their paranoia with what what's happened mm-hmm. uh, and what is happening. Yeah. Uh, we want we we are proud of how we make our sausage. There's nothing but filet mignon that goes in our sausage. You know what I mean? (laughs) And we're proud of it. We'll show anybody anything, anytime. I'm not hiding. You can call me. I'll do YouTube videos any day of the week. Um, And so that's that's who I am. That's what I stand for. Um, And you have the situation with the the Steely Dan with the label and the one shoot. Right, so on that. the Steely Dan, the last two Steely Dans, one was uh, two, two against, against nature, two against nature, and that one, the the last two Steely Dans were analog recorded, multi-channel analog recorded. One was mixed to high res digital, two against nature, the one that won the Grammy. And the other one was mixed to an analog two track. Right. We couldn't find an analog two track for two against nature. So we used the high res digital file that Scott Hall at the master disc used. And we had him cut that to, to, to directly to lacquer. And then we had Bernie use the original two track mix down of the last album and that's how we made that one. yeah now when we were pressing those they made a mistake and they put our, our staff made you a mistake. packaging those the package yeah not pressing but yeah okay the packaging made a mistake they put the sticker that says 100 percent analog and a youtuber uh Don, I can't remember how to uh, pronounce his last name, but it's like a French last name. And being a Cajun from Louisiana, I should be able to pronounce it, but uh, <laughs> I won't. I won't uh, butcher. <laughs> butcher. And um, he noticed it and he mentioned it. I happened to watch his video and I made a comment and I says, you know what? You're right. Thank you. And the rest of what we had in stock, we had to pull it down off the shelf. We had to bring it back over, 
like it was like 3,000 of them. So that's two or three pallets. Bring it back over to the pressing plant. Rip open the boxes. Rip open the the the, uh, the plastic. Throw away the plastic. Put another plastic on without the sticker. And put it back in the box. Uh, it was a hassle. It was probably thousand, two thousand dollars worth of of labor. Yeah. But it's the only thing we should do because the sticker was not correct. Yep. Yeah. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. And we did it. And so um, we're going to start now with a uh, sparse code on the, we're coming up with two huge releases. Um, and those releases, we're going to start putting on the bottom 100% analog. This is mastered and cut directly from the original master tape. Okay. okay, we're going to start taking pictures of the tapes. We we have been a lot, like every verb. I have a picture of the master tape. Yeah, you know, uh, we have a lot of pictures it's of a lot of master. A little more invisibility, I guess, of that. That's yeah. That's well, right. we're going to step up. I mean, we we figured we we were at the top of our game, and we've been honest and showing pictures the whole time. I I, I knew that. What we do, and and I'm proud of it. And I show it. There's nothing to hide. I didn't know what the others were doing. I knew the others were using tape copies. I just didn't know that some of them were using digital tape copies. Now that really changes the recipe. A that bit. surprised <laughs> that surprised me. Yeah. Well, friends, there you go. Uh... Chad Kasim saying uh, that whole thing surprised him. I think it surprised a lot of people. So um, what do you think? Uh, pretty in-depth answers and conversation and uh, reflections in there about uh, what they do, how they do it, what their philosophy is. And I think um, that's really uh, refreshing. I think the uh, thing that I really learned the most in the whole uh, process related to this is that uh, he said uh, they thought they were on top of their game, and yet, you know, more is expected. Um, the details that I showed in the uh, pop-ups that I did of the albums and the Steely Dans and the Beach Boys and the text that's in there, that is stuff that I captured weeks and weeks ago. So this is not anything that they just threw out in uh, response to uh, the MoFi thing. This is how they have um, put things up and, and how they have dealt with things all along. Uh, when mistakes were made, a small mistake in terms of uh, that sticker, uh, they took it on the chin a bit but pulled that inventory and, and did the right thing. They didn't just throw another you know, brand sticker or something over that one. They could have thrown another QRP pressing sticker over it and not unbagged it and, uh, uh, you know, save some time and money. But uh, that wasn't who they are. And, you know, sometimes it's the small things that, that make a difference. Um, I've just been reading some of the reviews on uh, the kind of blue 45 RPM. People are starting to spin that they're just getting literally today. Uh, in the mail from Shipment Monday and uh, uh, blown away. And uh, that album's been done a lot, obviously. So uh, this was uh, the first video from uh, Chad Kasim. I have others to come. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, if you would, subscribe to the channel. Let your friends know. I'd appreciate it. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Any comments you have, I really like to watch uh, those coming in and answer those as I can. So again, thank you for watching The Sound of Safe and Sound, Texas. Take care, everybody.